Hello, welcome and good evening to another episode where I built a retro sound card. This design is a clone of the, or like a reverse engineered version of the Creative Game Blaster, which is basically the card that came before the Sound Blaster card. And um, if you maybe watched, <laughs> not many people did, my Sierra 10th anniversary catalog from 1990 or 1989, they heavily advertised the Game Blaster card, but it was a very short-lived product. Um, it came around the same time the Adlib entered the computer gaming market, um, and the Adlib was, I don't know, more successful because I think the sound was better. The OPL2 used on the Adlib could produce very nice um, instruments although only mono sound this thing here is stereo so um, those two ICs here are um, these little chips here the Philips SAA 1099 that's also why this board or this project is called Moose 1099 music card 1099 um, this chip made by Philips it's not being produced anymore for a long time but you can get them New old stock or salvaged, salvaged ICs from China or Hong Kong or something. Um, they can only do um, rectangle, like square wave, square wave sound. It sounds much more synthetic than the um, Adlib cards, but you have two of those, so you have uh, I think ten per chip, ten channels per chip or something, uh, which makes either ten stereo channels or twenty monophonic ones. Um, yeah, so there's that. Um, it's definitely an advantage. It's not supported by so many games, but basically all the Sierra SCI games uh, with EGA graphics and the earlier uh, Lucasfilm games like Indiana Jones 3, Monkey Island 1, they, and I think maybe Loom, probably not, but they should support this uh, as well. So we have a couple of games to play with. And uh, yeah, again, it's quite fun to do work on that. And I think um, this card here, this specific card, also uses the original amplifier chip, uh, ST Micro TA2025B, which is also not in production anymore. So you also have to, have to get that from eBay as new old stock or salvaged components. I think these are not really new old stock. So yeah, um, the rest are just 74 series Logic IC, so there's nothing fancy going on here. Um, there will be one row of jumpers where you can set the base address of the synth. And as you can see, it's um, already similar to the Sound Blaster. The range is 210 to 260, um, with 220 being the default for the Game Blaster as well as the Sound Blaster. Th um, fun fact, the Sound Blaster 1.0, actually, um, while incorporating all the AdLib features and um, a DAC for speech and sound effects, also included the two Philips chips for Game Blaster compatibility. So you could still use those features on the Sound Blaster 1.0. The 1.5 removed that, but left the sockets, so you could buy your own Philips ICs and upgrade your card to Game Blaster compatibility. Um, but those cards are like, <laughs> if you can get them at all, they are so expensive that this uh, thing here will be much cheaper and much more fun to do than basically hunt down one of those cards for a couple hundred bucks on eBay or something. Yeah, so what we will do in this episode is um, install all the sockets capacitors, uh, resistors, and the um, jumpers. And that will be it more or less. I'm still missing the port and the audio jack, but I'll talk about that later. Um, that will be part two of this video, and um, part two will also show hopefully a functioning card with a bracket installed and everything. Yeah, so let's fire up the iron and have a go at it.
Okay, first charge is done. Um, we assembled the IC sockets, all the buffer capacitors, and all the filtering caps, and I think this here is also some filtering caps. This probably, oh, this may be also power supply, but this looks like it's rooted in the audio um, line here. These are the sockets for the Philips SA1099 um, synth chips, and I don't have a socket for the amplifier. Actually, the data sheet for this amplifier says that you should not use a socket. I'm probably going to use one anyway, since, uh, well, these are old um, ICs and I don't know if they actually work and I don't want to desolder and solder um, all over again. So I'm probably still going to get a DIP16 socket. Anyway, the main problem here is um, the pot and the audio jack. Um, by mistake, I ordered the wrong audio jack, so next week I will get the proper one. And I ordered the correct pot, but um, yeah, I can show you. These are the pots that supposedly fit, and they do, but they are huge. So, um, sadly, for whatever reasons, um, probably because it was at hand, the design of this card chose this footprint and used, I don't know what pot, so it will fit, but you won't be able to install it properly in your PC and the uh, bracket won't fit at all. So I'm not going to use these. I also have some some alternative to this coming in, which has a different footprint, but uh, people on the forums said, oh, well, um, the smaller ones do fit if you bend the, the leads a little bit. Uh, yeah, so next revision of this board should accommodate smaller pods. Um, I think this is as I said. Oh, look at this. I found the socket. I found the missing socket. That's brilliant. I will install it after all. Um, yeah, but this is only a small thing. So, this was straightforward enough. I'm gonna bend those leads here to keep it in place. And we'll solder it in. Um, after soldering, Everything I will also clean it down with some isopropyl alcohol, install all the ICs, and then it's more or less ready to go. But this will have to wait until next week. So um, for today, this is more or less it. All the nice little ICs here, this is everything that is needed, will be installed also in the next video. And then we can um, make a test run of this. And we can pick some Sierra and Lucas film games to, yeah, hear what it sounds like. I'm really looking forward to the to the stereo feature because that's what makes it <laughs> sort of better than the AdLib. The sound itself is hmm, arguably arguably worse, um, but other than that, I think this is a very nice little project. Um, I love retro sound cards, and yeah, uh, easy enough to solder anyway. So this is it for the moment. Thanks again for watching. Please share, like, and definitely subscribe. Only by subscribing you can help my channel grow, and maybe at one point I can even um, get something back from YouTube or something, which is uh, far way off takes like a thousand subscribers um, before you can get monetization. Right now this is just a hobby that I do in the evenings, but it would be nice to um, get something of that time rewarded. Uh, but you watching this and sharing this is already pretty neat, so thank you for one year of uh, this channel and see you next week.